Hey everyone, quick back to Mr. Basics here. So today I'll be taking a lecture on DNA replication and this lecture is divided into five parts. That is initiation of DNA replication, structure of DNA polymerase enzyme, elongation, termination, and the control of DNA replication. Of DNA replication in prokaryotes requires the following proteins. This includes DNA A, DNA B, DNA C, primase, SSB, and DNA polymerase tree enzyme. The initiation starts at RIC on the chromosome. In the initial step, DNA A protein binds a specific nine-mer sequence within the RIC. It is to be noted that only ATP-bound DNA A binds to DNA. ADP-bound DNA A cannot bind the DNA sequence. There is a 13-mer sequence repeat besides the 9-mer sequence. Once the DNA A protein binds the 9-mer sequence, it causes strand separation within the 13-mer repeat. In the next step, DNA B protein, also known as helicase, and DNA C protein, also known as helicase loader, are loaded to the melted DNA. Helicase loader interacts with DNA A and loads the helicase in the melted region. Using energy from ATP, the helicase starts unwinding of the DNA. And the DNA so formed are quickly occupied by SSB also known as single-stranded DNA binding protein. The SSB interacts with single-stranded DNA via electrostatic interactions and nitrogenous bases via stacking interaction. SSB shows cooperative binding, that is, one molecule of SSB helps the binding of other SSB. After opening of the DNA strands, Primase forms a short RNA primer on the template DNA. Finally, DNA polymerase tree hollow enzyme is loaded and the leading and the lagging strand synthesis starts. So let's quickly go through the steps of initiation of DNA replication. The DNA A protein along with ATP binds the DNA at the 9-mer sequence. DNA A denatures the DNA at the 13-mer sequence. The helicase and the DNA C, that is helicase loader, is loaded to the melted DNA. With the help of ATP, the helicase unwinds the DNA. The single-stranded DNA are occupied by SSB. Primase forms a short primer, and finally, Ball3 is loaded. The structure of DNA polymerase resembles a closed hand. It has a palm domain, finger domain, and a thumb domain. A palm domain binds magnesium and zinc ions for catalysis. The magnesium ions plays an important role in the phosphodiester bond formation between the OH group and the incoming DNTP. In this reaction, the hydrogen of hydroxyl group is removed to form an oxy anion. This oxy anion reacts with the alpha phosphoryl group of the incoming DNTP to complete the reaction. It should be noted that all four DNTPs act as a substrate for DNA polymerase enzyme. When the correct DNTP base pairs, only one out of four nucleotides is added. This phenomenon is known as kinetic selectivity of DNA polymerase enzyme. The DNA polymerase enzyme also has a unique ability to distinguish between RNTPs and DNTPs. The concentration of RNTPs is tenfold higher as compared to DNTPs in the cytoplasm, but only DNTPs are incorporated into the DNA. This occurs because the nucleotide binding pocket is too small to allow the presence of extra hydroxyl group of the RNTP. And this phenomenon is known as steric exclusion of RNTPs. 
Okay, now let's talk about the finger domain. The finger domain has alpha helical protein having arginine, lysine, and tyrosine residues at the active site. These residues binds to incoming nucleotides. If correct nucleotide is added and base pairing forms, there is a conformational change in the alpha helix that brings the nucleotide close to the catalytic site in the palm domain. The palm domain has two roles. It maintains correct position of RNA primer and maintains strong association of DNA polymerase with its substrate. Let's quickly go through the structure of DNA polymerase enzyme. It has three main domains known as the PAM domain, finger domain, and the thumb domain. The PAM domain is the main catalytic site which binds magnesium and zinc ions and play an important role in catalysis. The finger domain has the alpha helical protein. It binds the incoming nucleotide and brings the DNTP close to the palm domain once a correct base pairing is formed. And finally, the thumb domain maintains the correct position of the primer. Now, let's talk about elongation. Elongation occurs after DNA polymerase 3 is loaded during initiation. During elongation, there is a synthesis of leading strand and the lagging strand. The synthesis of leading strand occurs in a continuous fashion and it's in the direction of the movement of DNA polymerase enzyme. However, the synthesis of lagging strand should occur in the opposite direction. Let's talk about lagging strand synthesis. In the first step, the primase forms a primer. And this primer can be extended in 5' prime to 3' prime direction by the formation of loop. As the polymerase moves forward, the loop is released. RNA primase again forms a primer which is again extended in the form of loop. Finally, when the RNA primers are degraded by the RNA's enzyme, it results in the formation of short fragments known as the Okazaki fragments or the lagging strand. Also during elongation, as the helicase continuously unwinds the DNA, there is a positive supercoiling and this supercoiling is removed by DNA topoisomerase enzyme. Termination of DNA replication occurs by the ter sequences present on the DNA and dus protein. As the chromosome of bacteria is circular, both the replication forks meet at the termination sequence, where they are encountered by dus protein which halts the movement of replication fork. This results in the formation of two catenated or linked circular DNA, and finally, topoisomerase 2 decatenates the two circular DNA, resulting in two separate chromosomes. Let's talk about regulation of DNA replication. Only the methylated strands undergo DNA replication. The newly synthesized strand is not methylated, and this structure is known as the hemimethylated DNA. That is, parent strand is methylated while the daughter strand is not methylated. These hemimethylated regions are bound by a protein known as SEC-A. SEC-A protein prevents the binding of DNA and then methylase and so reinitiation of replication is prevented. Now, with time, SEC-A disassociates giving space for dem methylase and DNA protein to bind. Dam methylase enzyme methylates to daughter DNA so that the reinitiation of replication can occur. The DNA protein also has a role in regulation of replication. Only DNA protein bound with the ATP can bind to the DNA. The ADP bound DNA fails to bind DNA. Replication occurs only when there is high nutrient for the generation of enough ATP 
for the DNA protein to be activated.